This is the start of a big subject, the Electronic Flight Instrument System, EFIS, and Autoflight. We've divided the lessons into four modules to make them more understandable. Module 12 covers EFIS, including the primary flight displays and multifunction displays, and the Attitude and Heading Reference System, AHARS. Module 13, Navigation, deals with six areas. The audio and radio control and display units, ARCTUS, radio navigation, the pitot-static air data system, various avionics instruments, the ground proximity warning system, GPWS, and weather radar. Module 14 is the traffic alert and collision avoidance system, TCAS, known within Europe as ACAS, the Airborne Collision Avoidance System. And last, but not least, Module 15 covers the Automatic Flight Control System, AFCS, including the Flight Management System, FMS. Central to the whole of the Q400 pilot aircraft interface, in particular to avionics, is the Flight Data Processing System, FDPS consisting of two independent computers, FTPS-1 and 2, located in the avionics rack integrated flight cabinets. The computers actually consist of modules processing tasks such as avionics power supply, aircraft configuration management, and input-output processing for the five main system screens. FTPS-1 and 2 network on ARINC data communication buses with many digital systems. They also network on general purpose data buses with other digital and analog systems and with other aircraft sensors. The processing functions of FDPS 1 and 2 include data concentration, conversion and traffic control along the buses, data mismatch between systems, monitoring system status and displaying advisory messages, display formatting and display switching on the five main screens, and input to the warning tone generators of the crew alerting system. The flight guidance module controls functions such as flight director, autopilot, yaw damper, tactile control steering, and pitch trim. More about these later. But for now, let's look at the electronic instrument system. The input-output processor modules of the flight data processing system send data down the digital communications buses to generate symbols on the left and right pilot primary flight displays, on MFD1 and 2, and on the engine display. The EFIS control panels operate the on-off and brightness for the PFDs and MFDs. The engine and system integrated display panel, ESID, controls display on the MFDs, and the engine control panel controls the rating shown on the engine display. There's also the flight guidance control panel that selects flight director modes, and the index control panels which adjust speed bugs and other data. Data displayed on the EFIS screens comes from a number of systems. The Attitude and Heading Reference System, AHARS 1 and 2 computers, the Air Data System computers, ADU 1 and 2, the FADEX, the Single or Dual Flight Management System, FMS, the Weather Radar System, the Audio and Radio Control and Display Units, ARCTUS, as well as other aircraft systems. Now let's take a tour of the many panels of the EFIS, Navigation and Auto Flight systems. We'll go into more detail when we describe the individual functions. On the EFIS control panels, these on-off and brightness knobs control the PFDs and MFDs on their side and this controls the brightness of the weather radar and enhanced terrain displays on the MFD navigation page. This knob controls the MFD nav range 
in nautical miles, and these select the bearing sources for the left and right bearing pointers on the PFDs. These buttons select the display on the MFD nav page for TCAS, for weather radar or enhanced terrain mapping, and for airport and nav aid data. The format button toggles between the ARC and full mode formats. On the engine and system integrated control panel, ESID, these knobs control what is displayed on MFD 1 and 2, and in the SIS format, these buttons control which system is displayed. The ENG position shows the normal engine display format on the MFD. The ENG SIS format is different from the MFD ENG position. The ENG SIS format is functionally the same as the engine display, but does not show the dials. All cycles through the next system page for each push. This controls on-off and brightness of the engine display. This controls which AHAR's computer is supplying attitude and heading input, and this controls which air data computer is supplying input. In norm, each side gets input from its own side AHAR's or ADC. The engine control panel lets you select max climb and max cruise engine ratings and derated takeoffs. On the glare shield, the flight guidance control panel has course knobs to set left and right course pointers and heading knobs. These knobs select the nav source for the left and right PFD and MFD, either VOR, ILS or FMS. These select vertical modes of the flight guidance system, including the altitude pre-select function, and these select natural modes, including standby mode. Here's the pitch wheel. This is the push button to engage or disengage the autopilot. When engaged, both white arrow lights illuminate, and this engages and disengages the yaw damper. Again, both white lights will illuminate. You can engage the yaw damper without engaging the autopilot, but the autopilot needs the yaw damper. So when you engage the autopilot, it automatically engages the yaw damper. With the autopilot engaged, disengaging the yaw damper will also disengage the autopilot. But disengaging the autopilot will not disengage the yaw damper. The HSI Select Push Button chooses the active side for ADU, AHARS and navigation input to the flight guidance computers. Only one light is on, unless you're in dual flight director mode for a CAT-2 landing. On both sides of the flight guidance panel are autopilot disengage lights. These illuminate if the autopilot disengages due to a malfunction. You press to reset them. Each control wheel has the normal autopilot disengage button. This does not trigger the red glare shield lights. Also on each control wheel is a tactile control steering switch. This is usually called touch control steering or TCS. More panels. Left and right of the five main display screens are the index control panels, ICPs. On these, you can select the two speed bugs on the airspeed indicator, select the barometric correction on the PFD altimeter, and set decision height on the PFD. On the forward pedestal are the attitude and heading reference system, AHARS panels, and on the aft, the weather radar control panel. More about these later. Also on the aft pedestal are the audio and radio control and display units, ARCTUs. These play an important role in communication and navigation. The primary flight displays have the normal EADI and EHSI, 
but only the full compass format. But they also include the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the inertial vertical speed indicator. TCAS vertical maneuvers are shown on the IVSI. The standby horizon, ASI and altimeter, are located on the center instrument panel. On the left side panel is the test switch for the air data computer. The five displays of the electronic instrument system are physically identical, so they can be reconfigured in the event of display malfunctions. In flight, company procedures may be to set both MFDs to nav mode, with the navigation source for the flying pilot set to FMS, and for the non-flying pilot to VOR ILS. But on ground, it's more normal to have the flying pilot's MFD in SIS showing the doors page, and the non-flying pilot's in SIS showing the electrical page. Notice the asymmetrical layout of the MFD selectors on the ESID panel. The permanent data area on MFD1 shows the powered flight control surfaces, and on MFD2, the flaps and hydraulics. If there's a problem with one of the MFDs, the permanent data area of the good MFD reverts to a composite system format. There is one automatic reversion in the event of a display failure. If the engine display fails completely, it is redisplayed on MFD1, provided that MFD1 was not already selected to PFD. PFD has priority over a failed engine display. For all other failures, you need to manually select the reversion display. The remaining MFD will show composite system format in its permanent data area. If both MFDs fail, or if both MFD selectors are not on SIS, pressing and holding a system button will show a mono format display of the system page on the engine display page until the button is released. Finally, with only battery power, you have power from the essential buses just to MFD1 and the engine display, to the MFD1 selector, and to the all push button.